Hello everyone, Blink here. The following is a coaching session that I had with a gold player where we've covered several AD carry fundamentals like wave management, keeping track of enemy abilities, builds, and map awareness during objectives. If you're interested in these concepts, I highly recommend you to keep watching. Leave a comment with your thoughts, drop me a like if you found this useful, and enjoy the video. I see you mainly play Caitlyn, Jean Ash, so okay, so you're is E main. Have you been playing ADC for um, all seasons? I see you, yeah, you've been ADC uh, since yeah. season yeah. 6, 7 or something like that? Yeah, uh, since 7, 5. In, in ranked, I've always played ADC. I see, okay, okay. Let's take a look. At this. Have you tried Aphelios? Aphelios? Uh, I've tried a few games, like three or four. I'm not really good with him. So. Yeah, he's pretty strong. It's, uh, it's not in my champion pools. So what what champion pool are you like focused more on like um for me like I always like to recommend a max of 3 champions uh for solo queue if you want to learn um because there's people that you know they switch champions every patch and they try to you know play what is strong every patch but um that's not really good for learning it's good for climbing but if you're not like high elo, I wouldn't try to like switch champions all the time. If you if you want to like learn first and get to you know improve so that you can get at least a diamond, then I would recommend for learning just to stick to like two to three champions and learn some basics first, and then you do and then you do the switching. Uh, well, yeah, I've basically my. Champion pool is on three champions. It should be Kate, Jean, and Tristana. These are my main ones. But since I've been hard stuck here, I, I played everything because it was the same anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I imagine you like tried different things, see if something worked or yeah. if something had like better success. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay, that's not too bad though. I like your Jean though. You have really good KDA on Jean. You should definitely keep it. Well, I guess I, from what I've seen on Jin, I have better positioning than with other ADCs. I guess it's because of the bullets thing. Mm -hmm. With the other ADCs, I tend to go, to go to the enemies a bit. Like I don't stay at max range like I used to stay with Jin. Okay, okay, so that's interesting. Some, some mechanical issue I have. Yeah, that's interesting that you like do it with Jin and not with others. So we can actually take a look at that during the game and see if that uh, applies as well. That could be interesting. Yeah. With Jin, you play good. Okay. Um. Position well. So yeah, like um, what I was gonna say is for. In, in terms of like learning fundamentals because um what i like to do every time like uh, if i see someone who's not diamond yet i like to focus first on the key fundamentals the key um, you know mistakes that someone makes like the most important and most like straight to the face thing that someone you know like you immediately see from someone um because that's as well the easiest thing to fix and it also has the most impact on your rank later on yeah so um, that's why I like, you know, keeping like a short uh, champion pool during the practice. Like after we finish the practice, you can like play any champion that you want. But at least during practice, I would prefer if you could like, you know, s uh, focus on like Jin, Caitlyn, Trist. So that you, your brain will have an easier time focusing on, you know, fundamentals and focusing on the game. If it doesn't have to constantly switch between, you know, piloting this champion and piloting another champion. Um, so you have b basically the f all all of the resources of your brain are available uh, for learning, basically. Yeah, I get. Um, and now I'm gonna give you. I don't know. You probably have this link. Uh, 
but I'll give you this is the spreadsheet that um, I give to my students so that we can uh, start keeping track of uh, improvement. I don't know if you have it. Yeah, I've, I've seen it before. Oh, true. I actually sent me yours, I believe. Uh, what? Sorry. You you actually sent me your your improvement uh, link? Uh, no, no, I didn't. Ah, okay, okay. But you do use it, right? Well, I didn't use it so far. Okay, I'll explain a bit if you want uh, how it works and how to use it in order to like fix um, mistakes with it. Um, so let me share my screen really quick. Let me know if you can see. Uh, yeah, I can see. Okay, so basically uh, this is like um, the uh, you just need to like the, the the link that I gave you. You just need to go you know, and to file, make a copy, and then save it in your own drive. Then you can use it. Um, so this is an example of a student. Um, so on the left part, you mainly see um, the performance part, like, uh, you know, what role you played, match time, uh, champion, KDA, CS per minute. This is like what you would keep track on every game. And then on the right, you have like goal this game and notes. So this is really important because um, this is where every game matters and um, you're going to make it matter with this. You basically will set one goal for a specific set of games like maybe 10 20 games depends on the goal and then for those 10 and 20 games you will only focus on that goal until you fix it and those are going to be like learning games they're they're not going to be i would prefer if you can do your learning games on like flex queue or maybe a smurf account where you don't really you know you don't really care so much about winning um because i don't want you to have like a winning game mentality i i want you like you know, to experiment, to try new things, to focus on the goal specifically, and not really focus about winning too much. Yeah. So yeah. Um, if you have like a uh, Smurf account or if you don't, then you can just do like flex queue, you know, like flex, uh, I don't really take it <laughs> too serious. So, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then for like those 10 to 20 games, you basically focus on that specific goal. Um, and at the end, you... You know, you check if you've uh, completed the goal correctly or not. For example, this player was focused on high CS and not dying. And based on, you know, his KDA, he got really good KDAs and got really good CS per minute because he only focused on this. Basically, during during these games, he would never try to roam. He would never try to trade. He would only focus on what are the things that can kill me and how can I not die and uh, how, how can I get high CS per minute. This player only focused on that goal. And until he didn't fix it, like until he didn't get like this CS per minute, he would not stop. Then after fixing that goal, he switches to a uh, winning conditions goal. And this this one you can't really see from performance. You need to like check a look at the, at the notes to see if he actually correctly focused on it. Um, and then, you know, again, like uh, it, or look like this two games. He probably felt that his CS per minute was bad again. So he focused really quickly on on that for two games and then fix it again. Then map awareness, you know, like not dying in late game team fights. There could be a lot of goals, but it's important that you identify which is the most important one and then you focus on that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can basically, you know, go to file, make a copy, save it in your drive. And um, in order to use it, uh, you need to first delete these columns, like uh, this first columns, do not do not delete these ones. Only that, kills, deaths, assists, and this one's like that, this one, and this one. Okay. So the only ones you don't need to delete, I'm going to highlight them so you can take a look at them. Okay. Just uh, let me know as soon as you got it. Uh, I took a screenshot. Ah, okay. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, this is the improvement uh, one part. And then now what we can do is um, from OPGG, uh, we can gather some uh, information about what are the possible things that uh, you might need to work on in the improvement. Um, but then uh, once we do the live game, we will um, see another like another mistakes and uh, other things that we can write down in the Excel to, to focus on. Um, so the first thing that comes to my mind is, you know, the same that this player did. High CS per minute and not dying. Um, I see your 
CS per minute couldn't be uh, at least you know you could as an ADC you could like I try to shoot for seven point five CS per minute as average seven point seven point five uh, is really good um, high elo ADCs go for eight point five but uh, I think seven point five is um, is attainable and uh, as well reduce your deaths per game like on Jin is really good uh, but on Caitlyn Ash you know four to five deaths per game is too much on ADCs. It should be like Jean, for example, three deaths per game, something like that. Right. Mm. So it will be pretty similar to this student that uh, focus on high CS per minute and not dying. Uh, I, I would prefer if you did, um, yeah, if you focus on that goal for the first ten to ten games. I think that's gonna be really, really good. Yep. Um, and then let me take a look at what else you do here. Um. Do you always build Infinity Edge first? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay, so um, I don't know if you've been keeping up with like ADC builds and stuff like that, but um, normally nobody, like in high low, nobody builds uh, IE first anymore. I don't know if you remember like a few patches ago, they changed, well, kind of like a few, like a season ago or maybe something like that. They changed IE um, and they introduced Storm Razor. And what, what, what is good about Storm, Storm Razor first item is that you get attack damage, you get attack speed, you get crit, and you get that uh, sweet passive where you auto attack someone and they they get slowed. Um, the thing with Infinity Edge first is that you don't get attack speed, and you don't really make use of the passive because you still don't have enough crit chance to make really good use of the passive of Infinity Edge first item. Um, so I don't know if you if you if you like um, uh, feel me on this, but I don't know. Do you feel well when you like buy IE first, but you don't really have any attack speed? Like yeah, you, your autos do ton, tons of damage, but you don't really crit too much, and you don't really have too much attack speed. Um, so for me, you know that that feels really bad. Like that re feels really clunky. Whereas when I buy Storm Razor first, I have like a ton of attack. You know, I th I believe it's like fifteen or twenty percent attack speed. Then I have crit chance as well. I have attack damage, and I get and I use and I have a very good use of the passive. You know, like I auto attack someone and they get like sixty percent slowed, which is crazy for auto attacking. And yeah, I I believe like that's really good for first item. I don't know if you if you want to experience uh, on it a bit, uh, but yeah, basically like if you go open a champion and you go to like the best players, you will see that most of them will build uh, Storm Razor first on their ADCs. Let's see if this guy plays ADC. This guy doesn't play. Um, on, can you do that like on every ADC? I would do that on every ADC. Well, except Kai'Sa if you want to go the blue build, this one. Well, yeah, that's right. But I mean, but the um, ones where, I, where I tend to go Infinity first. Yeah, I would pretty much go like Caitlyn, Tristana, um even well Sivir goes um a, a blue river or I don't know the item essence river uh, but yeah like most of the ADCs I would go actually storm razor first I think that's a very very good item because it gives you all the stats you need and the passive you make really good use of it and I would go for IE like third item probably like I would go storm razor then like a zeal item and then my infinity edge I'm just gonna write that down so we have it. Um, then I see. Apart from that, your build looks good. Yeah. I see you buy a lot of uh, QSS though. A lot of what? Uh, QSS uh, scimitar. Oh well, when they have something, I that will kill me. Yeah. Like QSS would save. Yeah, that's good, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's actually good. Wait, well, this game is kind of like. Um, they didn't really have that much to see this game. Uh, I, what did they have? Can I see uh, the enemies? Uh, it's Irelia, Karthus, Azir. Then Ash is the only CC and one. You can uh, Yumi maybe as well, but um, it's not too much CC though. 
think I took it for Ash out. I think I got out sometimes. I think. That's that's good. I mean, it depends. Like, if you like are aware of these abilities before a fight, you should not get hit by it. But um, what I like to do, I don't know if you if you do this as well on ADCs, is when I play against assassins. There's like a specific build that I go, which is like after my my first two items, then I go bam bam scepter into uh, GA. If you have ba bam scepter into GA, you basically wait, have what is bam scepter? Uh, like the one that you get. Uh, wait, let me see if I can open up an item. Uh, the one that you get when uh, you're gonna build life steal items, the yellow one. Let's see if oh, you. Oh, vamp vampiric. Yeah, vampiric scepter. Yes, yes, yes. So you go bam scepter. You don't finish your item, and then you instantaneously go after bam bam scepter. You go GA. And that's a really good counter to assassins, assassins team, or people like that, you know, prefer to engage onto the ADCs, you know, like bruisers and stuff like that, Renekton, or, um, and that helps a ton because the GA allows you to, you know, have that safety and they will rarely engage on you if they, you know, see that you have GA. And the lifesteal allows you to kite backwards and, and heal up uh, during the fights. Um, and I, I I like to go that because if I really you know if they play assassins, it means they're rarely gonna have like a tank, a tanky team. So you don't really need to go for more damage. You need to go for more uh, survivability. Um, in which in which case I like the you know bam setter plus GA combo. Um, but yeah, just uh, just a quick note like you can experiment with it and see if you like it or not. And then from there you can you know assess if you will do it every game or maybe you don't like it. It's just uh, something to try. Uh, and what do you build out of the out of the vampiric set? I would even, I mean, I don't like bloodthirster too much. So you can actually go scimitar from the bam scepter. That's that's okay. Um, what else can you build from bam scepter? Um, Death dance is good if they have like. Uh, one shot uh, assassins like uh, Rengar and stuff like that. That um, death stance is quite good. Um, yeah, probably that. What else can you build? Well, I don't know if you know this lethality item that builds uh, builds from Bamp Scepter and um, ser Serrated Dirk, which gives you like attack speed if you're in a one v one. I don't know which one you're talking about. Uh, wait, let me let. Items. This one. Oh, okay. This one builds some um, as well, uh, bam scepter, and it's quite good. It's not too bad. All right. Um, yeah, I think that that's pretty much it for from your OPG. Other than that, that looks your runes look fine. Yeah, I, I like them. And, uh, can you find the gene game with 12-0 or something? Let's see. Yeah, I see here. Uh, the thing is, like here my whole team was feeding, but I didn't die once. The thing is, I I have this problem with the autopiloting. Like when I really focus the whole game. I can even manage to not die at all, no matter what happens, because I always like I tend to uh, before every fight I look at the map and I tell myself well, how many people are there, or oh, are they? Is there a five v five, four v four? If it's a four v four, okay, can we engage in a good way in that fight and make it uh, make it nice, or we can. Mm -hmm. uh, like can any of our team catch someone, start the fight in a good way. Okay, then it's worth to go and worth to fight. Or it's a 4v5, but we can one-shot one of them. Okay, then it's still worth to go. To go. If it's a 4v5, but we cannot engage in any good way, then I don't go there. Mm -hmm. That That's my thinking habit in team fights when I do pay attention, when my autopilot doesn't take off. Uh, so I don't know if it's good, the way I think or not. or Yeah. Totally. Like when you take into account all the variables before a fight, it's it's actually then when you can really start 
you know, having consistent fights. Um, because the problem with autopiloting is that it breaks your consistency because autopiloting, the thing that it will do is that in some games you will play like this, you will have like hyper-focused and in some game, and in other games, if you're autopiloting, you will not do that. So your perf performance is gonna, um, it's not gonna be consistent, right? Yeah. So I don't know how many games do you play a day? Just uh, uh, so I know. I usually play around. Uh, depends. This period I play a lot, but it could be around three, four, something like that. Okay. Okay. Because what happens to me, and I, I can imagine for a lot of players, is when I play a game like this, and I'm, I'm hyper-focused, I'm really exhausted after the game. Like, I don't yeah. know if you can understand me, but... Yeah, I, I, I get <laughs> Yeah, like, you're so exhausted because you're focused like crazy on the game. So if you go instantaneously into the next one, without really resting or not taking into account that you've just focused like crazy you're going to probably autopilot, not like 100% autopilot, but you will not focus as hard on the next game. And that can ruin your consistency, basically. Yeah. So true. what I like to do is like in periods where I need to play good, like for example, when I'm like learning, I don't really care if my performance is good or bad. I just care about learning. But if I'm like climbing, the thing that I do for climbing is I don't really play more than two to three games a day. Because I want those two to three games to be hyper focused. Because I really need in high low, I need, really need to like hyper focus if I want to win. If I just autopilot, I'm just gonna lose most of the time, or I'm not gonna carry you, I'm not gonna do anything, and my performance is gonna drop. It doesn't matter if I play like six or eight games, but if I play those games in, on, on autopilot, not like 100% autopilot, but like not my top, like my 100% then yeah for me it's not like really worth to play those games so when i'm climbing i really take a look at like how you know how can i hyper focus in the first game i'm going to hyper focus then if i i'm really exhausted i'm going to take like you know 10 minutes to like get up of, get up of the chair uh, drink some some juice or something you know get something moving and then go back refresh the mind and and hyper focus again for like two to three games like i can't i cannot even go more than three games with hyper focus then i just am exhausted for the rest of the day i just do something else you know yeah um so yeah like overall your approach when thinking about fights is really good I, I think that if you can pull off this kind of performance like on every game but only play like two to three climbing games a day then you're gonna be climbing like crazy um but uh, yeah here's when it, when it comes to the point regarding like learning versus climbing when, when you're learning, like, for, for example, now I would prefer if you, like, focus on learning for a few, you know, for, like, one week or two weeks where we only focus on learning. Um, so I, you don't really, like, need to hyper-focus during learning. Like, you don't need to autopilot, but you don't really need to exhaust yourself too much in-game. You just need to focus on only one thing uh, during learning. And then, like, after one or two weeks that you focused on learning, then you will go back to, to climbing again. And uh, yeah, you can probably even hit plat three, I think, in two weeks. Plat three, plat two. It depends on, uh, yeah, those hyper focused games, to be honest. Yeah. All right. All right. So, um, what if you don't? What if you do the um, take a look at the game? Because I I don't know if you want to do a live game or you you had like a recording. I don't know if you. Yeah, I had uh, a game uploaded on YouTube. Oh, okay, okay. All right, let's take a look at the link. Wait, I'll send you. Okay. Okay, perfect. But as I said, I don't know it's half screen. No problem, no problem. Like we just make it full screen here and it should be good. Okay, you see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's quickly turn this on. all right okay what, what i like to do as well um during every game is try and come up with the winning conditions of the game during the loading screen um so let's let's go over them together um so on the top lane we see a raven versus timo matchups so that should be kind of like a 
easy matchup for for the for the Riven. If she pulls it out well, she's running ignite, so that should be good. Uh, but what I can imagine is that it will drag a, a lot of like jungler jungler attention to top lane this game. Uh, junglers are Vi against Hecarim. Um, so they're in a sense they're pretty similar. Um, Hecarim has like level four, re really good level four ganking, whereas Vi kind of like prefers to wait for six before trying to attempt with ganks. Then we have Kassadin against Nico. Kassadin obviously looking to scale um, and get out of the laning phase safely. Nico, on the other hand, she's running Ignite and she's running Glacial Augment, so she's really gonna look to, you know, smash lane and then try to catch in the jungle with uh, GLP probably, or roam with GLP. So that's something uh, we need to be aware of. Um, and then Jin, Brom against Caitlyn Thresh. So this one is an interesting matchup. So they definitely have a really good range advantage during lane. And they have the Ignite advantage. Um, Brom, for some reason, went Exhaust. I don't really like Exhaust for support. So what what we can like guess from this is that it depends on how the Thresh plays it out. But you will prob probably be screwed in this lane. Um, Caitlyn Thresh is really strong and Brom doesn't really, you know offer too much you, you definitely have like a 2v2 potential like you can go for a kill in some situations um but you're gonna get poked this lane a ton i can imagine i don't know if like the game plays out like this but just from the picks this is what uh what it, it could play out like well when i I when I see such a comp, I usually I don't know what I did this game because I was very tilted. Probably I even played the <laughs> like when I see this comp, I usually just stay behind, try to farm and stay behind and wait for Brom to do something to Kate. Like if Brom goes all in on Kate, then I'm ready to go as long as I take care of Trash Q, not mm -hmm. to get hooked. But I guess if I don't get hooked, then it's a win for us. If on if we go all in. They don't have as much all all in potential as we do. Yeah, you you definitely have the all in, and they have the poke. So against yeah. uh, uh, this typical matchup of all in against poke, your ob you know your objective in the lane is just to be as healthy as possible, so that you can follow up on on a brom engage. Whereas they would like to you know, their comp will like you will, will like to poke you, so that when you try to all in, you already will be half HP from the poke, so that you lose the two v two. Yeah. Um, but just from the like the I always like to take a look at the jungle matchup because it really is gonna tell you how to play the the first levels. Like from what I can guess, Cassadin is really weak early. Neko is really strong, and they have the push advantage. Like if they, you know, play the lane correctly, Thresh and Caitlyn will most likely push you, and they will have like the lane control. What does this mean? Like if the bot lane is pushed and the mid lane is pushed. This means that the uh, jungler can just take free drakes bot lane and have full control of the bot scuttle. Bot scuttle, bot drakes, and potentially dive you. Um, so this is important to understand in the beginning of the game so that you can prepare ahead and even tell your jungler, you know, like um, don't, re don't even come bot, just gank top because top is probably the winning matchup in this game. It's the only winning matchup. Um, so if I was the jungler, I would completely ignore mid lane, ignore bot lane, because he can't really gank bot lane either way. Like, it's a Thresh Caitlyn. So the Thresh just lanterns out and Vi doesn't do anything, unless they're, like, super overextended. Um, so I would, like, have this plan on my head and think, like, okay, like, I'm just going to farm. I'm not really going to contest any drakes, um, you know, because my mid lane is Cassidyn, and we have also a losing matchup on, on the bot lane. Um, and I'm just going to play out for scaling, you know? I'm just gonna wait, and I I would like my jungler to gank top lane and and get the Riven ahead, and and that's the only thing you can hope for in early game. Um, and la later on on team fights, you definitely have a better team fight. Um, well, actually, they have a I think they have better team fight, but you have like strong laners, strong like uh, split pushers with uh, Riven and Cassidy. Um, so yeah, later on on the game, you might be able to you know set up like a one three one scenario where you guys go three in the middle. And they cast it and driven push bot, and then from there they get picks because they that's where they excel at. Yeah. Um, so let's see how the game plays out. They start off with embate, 
Brom flashed. <laughs> did the did the Brom flashed here? I I think so. Yeah, he probably has to. Yep, he flashed. Okay. Yeah. Okay, another indicator that we're just gonna give up lane. Like Brom flashed. This means they're gonna rush level two and try to get a kill. Um, this is kind of risky here. We don't really want to contest here. Brom is back in. Caitlyn started W, so that, that's really good. Caitlyn starts W means we kind of have like a decent level one. If Caitlyn starts Q, then that's another story. Um, but yeah, we push this. Wait, Caitlyn is mid lane? What? No, it's Nico. Oh, it's Nico transformed. Okay, okay, my bad. <laughs> I got outplayed. Holy shit. Okay, really nice Q. Okay, since Caitlyn started the uh, W, you 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 are doing really good of keeping control of the lane early. <clears throat> so yeah, you need to like hit the minions as much as you can, which is what you're doing really good. So you get level two faster. Yeah, that was in my head. Great. Okay. I expected to. Brom is still level one. Yeah. Because uh, he arrived at the lane. Wait, 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 you're getting so tilted. Relax. Or you're you're, you're, you're already super tilted. Like there's no way you kill them here either way. Like you're not gonna get you're gonna get a trade, but you're not gonna you know they're so close to the turret. Yeah. And uh, you know you have these moments when you feel your heart stuck in that rank. And there's nothing to do about it. That's why it was very tilted. Yeah, you don't really need to, like, I would work on you as well with the tilt if you want. Um, but yeah, tilt is overall really useless. Yeah, You don't really want to tilt never because uh, it's not really going to help you in any way. So I don't really like this, like, ping that you do to the brown because it doesn't help in any way, you know. It doesn't allow you to, you know, play better or it's not going to focus this guy more, you know. So yeah. I, will, I will just look at myself. Um, now, this is important here, this word that you do here. Um, wh why did you ward now? Uh, well, I don't know. We are we push the lane and the jungle is probably here. Okay, so you saw that these guys leashed on blue buff, right? Well, yeah. Oh, so he left. Okay. Yeah. So he's not here. Anymore. Yeah. So you need to think about these things. You don't really want to waste your wards because, you know. Jungler is going to be, they finish the clear, normally Hecarim is quite slow in clear. It's not like super fast, so normally junglers fin finish to clear at like 235 to 240. They finish like the 3 buffs and get level 3. Um, Hecarim probably finishes at like 245 because he's kind of slow. So at like 245 he's just going to be like here, probably. Yeah. So... I don't really like this word because this word it has a duration of like one minute. And what's going to happen is that he's going to go top, probably going to try to fight top scuttle. After he clears, then he's going to probably try to gank mid, come bot. And then when he goes for the bot side scuttle, you will not have any words left because you use them. Yeah. So I don't really like this word here because it really... Um, wait, this bug that for me. Um, so, so because la r later on you're not gonna have um, you're not gonna have a ward. So I, I think you kind of like autopilot it with this ward. You don't you didn't really think, okay, I need to ward here because the jungler is here. Um, but if you've noticed that he started blue buff and he's pathing topside, then you don't really you know you don't really put this ward now. You wait at like three minutes thirty or something or three minutes twenty to put the ward in the river. Yeah. So that's something to note there. Okay, so we keep pushing here. We want to get lane control. Like, they already made a really huge mistake. Like, Caitlyn gave you lane control. She's not really punished. Like, she first made the mistake of starting W. And then she's not punishing enough. You know, Thresh is probably the, the same way you're tilted at Brom because he didn't engage. Kate, uh, Thresh is tilted at Caitlyn because she's not putting lane control. You see the Thresh walking up like that? He wants to exert lane control because he knows they have the winning matchup. But Caitlyn is not really playing well. Caitlyn is actually, you know, far back, farming, 
as if she uh, had to farm, you know, she doesn't really need to farm, she just needs to uh, get the lane control. Um, so probably Thresh is tilted uh, as well because Caitlyn is not really giving, uh, you know, it's not put really, really putting any pressure on the lane. Yeah. You know, Thresh is, is actually the one trying to do it, uh, but Caitlyn is not really doing anything. And then you just win these trades like crazy because of Caitlyn playing really bad. And then Brom wasted, wasted exhaust. Like, what the hell? Um, but it's overall good because you, you get him to have HP. And I don't know if you've noticed what this allows you, but because you're having lane control, this means that your jungler can now play for bot side scuttle. Um, yeah. Whereas in a normal situation, this would not be possible. Like, this would not be possible if Caitlyn played this right. So this is really good. Um, so now we need to keep pushing. Vi is wasting time. This never works. You just need to keep pushing. She just need to take the scuttle crab. And we see Hecarim topside. Uh, did, did you see him topside? He was just ganking Riven. I'll rewind a bit. So we see Hecarim topside. Um, so again, like we, we really wasted this word. But the the thing is, we have information about Hecarim. He's probably like the, when Riven, sorry, when uh, Vi. Uh, goes for this scuttle crab. He is gonna go for the top size scuttle crab. So that that gives us even more time um, to play lane pressure. Um, so we keep pushing, getting lane control. Riven actually kills the Timor. Really nice. And yeah, and gets uh, jungle pressure top. So that's really that's kind of normal. We want to sustain a bit with uh, fleet since we're half HP. <coughs> we want to keep pushing because if we don't push the lane, this is what allows Fresh to do. Like this engage that he's trying to do, it only works if they have more minions or if they have like even minions. But if we have the minion advantage, then they never win a 2v2. Uh, let's see how this plays out. This is interesting. Caitlyn doesn't take the... We die here. <laughs> That's so bad. I got so, so tilted. Okay, so let's take a look at... Me like, decision-wise... Let me check. Let me rewind. Okay. So, because they have the lane in the middle, they are allowed to do this play. And you're already quite poked, you know, Brown is like half HP, you're 70, 60% HP. So I think they normally would not win this, like you definitely should win this 2v2. Um, but the decision to, the decision is fine to fight it. Now let's take a look at mechanically what we could have done better here. So we're already playing too far up here. Uh, we're not really getting use of, we're not really um, making use of the Brom passive. Like, look at this. He autos, um, but you should be here. Because there's no way Thresh can queue through these three minions. So you should be here, um, making use of the of the minions, blocking the Thresh queue, and hitting the, hitting the Thresh. With the Brom passive. Like, hitting sooner. And I didn't heal him in time. Yeah, and, and also, yeah, you didn't heal him. So that, that's the first thing here. So the way I would play out this is in instead of like walking back, so as soon as we see this, this guy autos, I would just stand here, you know, where you are. Stand here, auto attack, Q, auto attack, don't even use W yet. And, and 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 you would by the time this happened, like by the time Brom got to this HP, Thresh would would have been like this with this HP. So then it would have been worth. So the decision wise, why did you why did you why would you decide to fight? Because if you take a look at this, you, you definitely win the 2v2. Like their decision to go in is bad. Like they making this is bad. Because they don't win the 2v2. You win the 2v2. Um, it's true that they have Ignite. Um, but I would take the bet here and, and play for the 2v2. Because Caitlyn is not really good in fights. She's good for poking. And she hasn't really poked you that much in lane. 
So I think they are making a mistake by by they are the ones making the mistake by trying to two v two. So for, first you have like the decision, and then you have the mechanics. So here the decision to fight is good. Then we make mechanical mistakes, and then the the, the outcome is bad. Like we have bad outcome. But that doesn't mean that the, the decision is bad. That only means that we messed up on the mechanics. So the decision here, I would take, I will always take this fight because we see Hacker in his top side. We have complete vision on bot, and considering the HPs, you're, you know, the, basically the same HP. I think you even have a little bit of a HP advantage, or probably the same, probably the same HP. So in a same HP scenario, I would think you you definitely win the two v two because Caitlyn doesn't really offer too much, and you've seen that she doesn't really play that well. She's not really been poking. The only one that is basically carrying this bot lane is the Thresh right now. Well, I, um, I played it that way because my decision was not to fight. My decision was to run away. Because mm. in my mind, in my mind, it's worth to fight. Like, the way I see the, these things, like, the way I used to improve in League was creating um, rules or habits. Like I don't, I'm not really like spontaneously saying, "Oh yeah, this looks good or this looks bad." Like before the game starts, I I tell myself, "Oh, I can't fight if this happens, or if this doesn't happen, I cannot fight." So in my mind, it was like, "Oh, I can fight if Brom uh, goes all in on Caitlyn, and I don't get hooked." Mm -hmm. These were my rules. But once he he got to trash, while Caitlyn was focusing him from far away, I my mind it was not work because i can't really see these things like uh, uh this is a thing i've been told many times that i'm not aggressive enough especially online because i don't really see opportunities i don't know i'm really mm -hmm. bad to see when i can actually kill someone okay okay i understand you a lot yeah that happens to me uh, to me as well so you mean like you don't really see it working, right? The 2v2. Like, you don't really see it, an, an image in your brain, you don't really see it working, right? And and, yeah. beca and because you don't really see the play working, you, you don't go for it. Okay, okay, I understand you. That's good, that's good. Like, you definitely need that, you know, like, prediction in your brain in order before doing every play. Um, here's the interesting thing. Um, in this, If this is a ranked game and you care about winning, it's fine. But I, what I but what I want you to do is I want you to go into full learning zone and on, always try these things, but of course in flex queue or on a different account, um, and yeah. al always try these things even if you don't see them working, just try it out and see what happens you know so that you can learn and you know you have the hypothesis in your mind, and then if it doesn't work then you'll learn from it. But if you don't have any hypothesis then you're not really going to try anything. You're not really going to learn anything. So you always need to try uh, an experiment during learning. During climbing, uh, during climbing, yes. During climbing, you need to like play to the safest option that you know it works, like with the knowledge that you have. But during learning, I, I want you to take these bets during learning. In this specific scenario, like we said, if we kind of like hit Thresh earlier, I think we would have stacked the passive sooner. And probably it would have been like probably this would have gone a bit different. If Brom also took ignite instead of exhaust, uh, Thresh would have been dead as well. That's another thing to note. Um, but yeah, and then this is important. So we lose the two v two, and I understand here what you're trying to do. You're trying to bait the Caitlyn in uh, because you have more damage. Yeah. Right. Uh, but then the Thresh like uh, we get into range from Thresh here. That E fuck me up. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is really good E by the Caitlyn here. So I don't know if you've been keeping track of the abilities during the fight because if you've noticed, Caitlyn didn't use E in the whole fight. So you, if you knew that the E was available, I think here you could have, like, for example, if in your brain you knew that this ability was still up for Caitlyn you would have never get hit by it because you would have like walked here or maybe you would have flashed here, you know? Yeah. Because she, because... Have, have it in mind. Yeah, that, that's like keeping track of abilities. That's another fundamental. I'm going to write it down in case we can use it for later. Keep track of abilities. 
that's one is really good um so if you've noticed that um if if, if caitlin hits doesn't hit this e you can probably even um you know just escape i wouldn't i wouldn't even try to flash and go for the kill because you don't have mana for q or e so by the time you like flash for one auto um I think they kill you, you know. Thresh flays you, and then she auto attacks. Yeah. So I would just like, you know, walk top and dodge it, or like flash away sooner. To to dodge the. E. <laughs> let's, let's support. <laughs> Go FK. <laughs> yeah, oh man, that's funny. Okay, so let's take a look at the situation now. Um, what are you building first on Jin? Uh, infinity. Oh, okay, okay. So even on Jin, I should go for Storm Razor first. Yeah, I think yeah, Storm Razor is really good because it also gives you the slow, or even like Essence River. I don't know if people go Essence River anymore on Jin. I don't really use it. Then let's go. Yeah, I would then go for Storm Razor. I think that's pretty broken. Okay, so now the lane is pushing. We don't really know. We don't have summoners, and we don't know where the jungler is gonna gank. So we might as well just crash this lane, you know? Crash. Crash. Yeah, crash it into the tower. If you crash, oh, yeah. if you crash it, the next wave that comes resets the lane in the middle. Um, but if you don't crash it, it will slow push towards them, and that will allow you. Uh, that will uh, allow them to set up a gank on you. Now that you don't have summoners, because yeah, take a look at this. Take a look at this. Because you didn't, because you didn't fast push it. You can take a look at your minimap and see the 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 wave coming, and this in the same position is gonna be like it's a mirror. So if yeah. Ka if Caitlyn is smart enough, she's just gonna drag the wave and not let it crash, and and uh, combine it with the next wave. And take a look at this. What happens? Because you didn't crash it. Take a look at where the lane is right now. You can't really play the lane like this now that you don't have summoners and that they got a double kill. You can't really play lane like this. Maybe Caitlyn, yeah. maybe Caitlyn is bad and she doesn't freeze it, which she is not doing. So Caitlyn is really bad. So she's not freezing it. Um, so you're gonna eventually, eventually, it's gonna come back to you. You know that the lane. But if if Caitlyn wasn't this bad, she would just froze the lane here and you would have no access to farm. Because Thresh will just walk up and just flay you or E you uh, or, or Q you, sorry. Um, and you will just die because you have no flash. Yeah, I realized I did a mistake. Like, I don't see it when I'm doing it, but after that, I feel I'm stuck there. <laughs> like, yeah, like <laughs> you, you realize like afterwards, afterwards, right? Like, oh yeah. shit, the lane. Holy. Okay, let me write down wave management as well. So we take a look at that. Um, so yeah, even 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 if the lane is like not even like closer to the turret, but even like sixty percent of the lane is out, it's still super hard to like walk up. I don't know if you've noticed. Like it's super, you know, Thresh is playing well, yeah. so you can't really even farm at this point. Like yeah, we, like take a look at that 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 Q was so close, um, and it all and this all happens like Thresh is able to play like this because the lane is here. And imagine if the lane was here, because Caitlyn was bad and she didn't froze it in front of the tower. I imagine if, if the lane was here, Thresh will be here, and you just can't walk. You can't, you can't do anything. You yeah. just lose, lose the lane. Um, hopefully, you know, thankfully Caitlyn is really bad and she's pushing the wave. So this is super good for us. If we are, uh, you know, if the, if the lane is allowed to come to us and we can, you know, uh, try to freeze it ourselves uh, cl closer to tower. This is gonna be really good. Um, Cassidy is dead, so this means Drake. Yeah, they're gonna Drake. So she's gonna try to crash this wave. I would try to freeze it here and not let it crash. Yeah, thin it out a little bit and then leave like three minions or something. Uh, no, this this is not good. Because now, yeah. now uh, you could have used that freeze. You could have used it to uh, freeze the lane here. If it res if it resets in the, let's see what happens here. 
Okay. I think you're a bit too scared here. You you, you saw that Thresh misses Flay and, and Hook, right? You saw that he misses Flay and Hook? So he doesn't have anything more to offer for like 15 seconds. So I think you're way too scared here. Yeah, like way too far up. Like you should not fear anything. And I think you, because of that, you miss a kill here. I think. Like I, I was expecting Hacker to come. That's that's why I was so far away. But yeah, you're right. I should be more close. You start auto in sooner then, and probably like those one or two auto attacks that you could have get into the Hacker aim it will mean that now he would have been dead because he has no ultimate here and he's running um, Ignite, right? Uh, Smite Ignite or something. Um, so yeah, I think there... You need to like see these things. Like you need to take a look at the support and once you see Thresh missing... Well, hitting Fly but missing Hook, like he uses both and he uses Lantern. So he can even help the Hecarim get out of the of the tower. So here I would just like start hitting instantaneously. Like I, I would not be running. I'll be like sitting here, you know? And as soon as I see the Hecarim, like insta auto. And and maybe you kill him here. With that with those extra one or two auto attacks, maybe you kill him. Um But yeah, the important thing is not so much this. The important thing is that we um gave them like you had the perfect freeze in front of the tower and we reset we reset the lane in in the middle so we can't walk up and farm that's important as well and now we have to stay here Cassidy is looking to come I don't know what Cassin is doing. You should pan your camera a little bit when he tries to go for these things. To look at him, you mean? Yeah, like uh, quickly, like really quick, like just a second of a look so that you have some f some form of information. Because now you don't really... S like you see, uh, like Cassin, like, you know, he lost like half HP, but you don't really know if they've like flashed for him or if uh, Thresh used something for him. You you, yeah. need, you need to like look really quickly so that you have some a little bit of inf information. Um, so yeah, you want to push this out and recall here. That's really nice. I'll kill Cassidy. You even are recommended Storm Razor first item. <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize. Yeah, they do. Okay. Mm, I don't really, I don't really like going to like lane without pots in a poke matchup. Yeah, I think I would have instead of getting that dagger, I would have like, um, see, like since you realize that you're not gonna fight uh, anymore because you know you saw that Braum is not really on the same page as you, and you see that Caitlyn is already so far ahead, I wouldn't even go for this dagger. I would have just go like refillable potion and a pink ward. Because going to lane like this will mean that if you take one auto and Q to the face from Caitlyn, or like one bad trait, you take one bad trait and you're forced out of lane, you're forced to recall again. Yep. And you're gonna miss a ton of CS. Whereas if you have like one or two potions, you would be able to stay for like you can take like one or two bad traits and recover. Like, I would say this is fine if you have, like, a Nami or a Soraka. But with a Brom, I would definitely, instead of this dagger, I would have gotten Pink Ward and a refillable potion. We see Thresh is mid, so this is fine. You can walk up to CS. You should not be so far. Like, you, you see the fight is mid, so... And you have vision. I think I didn't see Thresh. I, I was scared of him being in the bush. Ah, okay, okay. I don't know why. Okay, so okay, again, we have another opportunity to freeze. Uh, but uh, I was not freezing. <laughs> this time I had like summoners, so I thought it's fine. To... Yeah, but if you realize that there is no objective on the map, there's no reason not to freeze. 
Like, oh. why why would you push the wave? You don't gain anything by pushing the wave, right? Like, if you push the wave, what what, what do you achieve? Like, these guys are gonna come back, but and if you push the wave and they freeze it, or or if they put it in the middle, you're gonna be screwed again. Even if you have summoners, it will mean that you will have to waste them just because of the wave. But if you keep it like that, you're you're never gonna need to use flash, and you can just free farm. Like yeah. you will only need to push this if like Drake was up, you know. So you don't go for the push like a default option. No, never. Like you all, there's ne never a default option. You always need to think why am I pushing? You know, you always need to have like intention with your wave. You always need to think, oh, what am I gonna do with the wave now? Do I need to push? Do I need to? Because now look what happens. You you push this, you farm one wave, and now how are you gonna keep farming now? Yeah. You you can't you can't farm anymore. Whereas if you if you had the wave here, you can just free farm. Yeah. I mean, not free 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 farm because Caitlyn is gonna poke you, but it's better than. Not even being able to take in, you know, to to get close to the wave. They're so bad that they're pushing it. I mean, probably here is not bad because they need to recall, so they need to push it. But the the thing is, uh, maybe you kill. Ooh, that was so close. That was a really nice ultimate, man. Um, so yeah, now they push it because they want to recall. Um, and now I would say because the lane is gonna reset, I would crash this next one. Because you can't really freeze anymore because the lane is in the middle. So yeah, you would rather just crash this one and probably take like Skull Crab from the river. Um, but uh, yeah, you really need to be careful of the... I mean, you really need to be mindful of the f when you can freeze, you know, and have having intention with the wave. That's uh, I think that's really key. So we push this recall. Mm. Okay, let's take a look at the tap. So Riven is doing fine. The rest is just kind of behind. Hecarim is ahead. Caitlyn is ahead. And Nick, Nico as well. So yeah, we're pretty screwed early game. But yeah, it's, it's as expected. Like we talked about during the loading screen. Like Riven is the only one that has a winning matchup. Um, they catch the jungler there, which is really nice, but they don't do Herald for some reason. That was free Herald. I don't know why they are not doing it. Like if I'm you and I realize this, I would just spam ping the Herald and most of the time they will listen because the reason why they are not doing Herald is because they didn't even notice that they, you know, they just killed the jungler and, and they don't notice that it means an objectives. Um, so I would just spam ping the Herald and most of the time they will do it. Okay, that's nice trade. Maybe you win. Okay, that that, that was a mistake there. You never walk in... You, if you know Caitlyn E, you never walk into the brush like that. You throw a knee here into the brush. But you don't, you don't walk up like that. Because now you're, she wins the trade and you're forced to heal. And if you don't have heal here, she kills you. Yep, exactly. Um, so like taking a look at the one v one, considering that you have very similar items to her, you can you can take this you can take this one v one. Um, but then we make a mechanical mistake. So the important thing is the mechanical mistake here to understand it. I think the problem is that I didn't have his ability is in mind if i had i i think i could even like flash sideways and do something or yeah as well that. i wasn't expecting it at all yeah that's something to know that's basically that's called like uh ability awareness basically keeping I, uh, keeping track of abilities i do keep track of abilities but i don't tend to keep track of um basic ones like for example uh fizz ultimate Malphite ultimate. these things i always know what and they are up for me, but mm -hmm. oh, this one is uh... <laughs> Hey, that's good. Well, you don't need to flash there because you always you always die in that situation. Just take the six hundred gold, which is super worth. 
they should never be trading kills when they are ahead. You know? So that's yeah. super good for you. So you take this kill and then you just die. You just accept your faith. You get 600, <laughs> 600 gold in your pocket and you just pimp out and you just, you know. You think this one is worth? Like. Yeah, it's, it's worth, but you don't need to flash. You save your flash, basically. Yeah. And uh, this guy shouldn't flash either. Like, uh, uh, you don't need to flash. Like, you don't need to always ex escape. I would rather just save my flash for, you know, when it can actually save you. Uh, or for, for an important fight, you know? Yeah. And yeah, here you see, you, you can just buy Storm Razor and you have a power spike instantaneously. That thrash is just meme him. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so they're, seems like they're trying to contest the Drake. Oh, we do have man advantage. Jungler is down. Okay, Kassadin. Nice. I love when my cousin gets fed. <laughs> okay, that's that's actually so good. You know, they're throwing so hard the enemy team. They're giving you guys like shutdown gold. Um, they should never be trading kills when they're ahead like that. And you and you should always when you are behind, you should always try to scrap for this type of gold. You know, like shutdown gold. Even yeah. if it's risky. Even if it's risky, because um, if you don't risk, you're gonna lose. Uh, by default eventually because you're already behind so you need to start risking now when when you don't need to risk is when you're ahead that's when you don't need to risk but if you're already going to lose this game um you might as well just try you know and scrap some kills with shutdown gold okay so we move here Okay. That's good. Nice, nice. You you guys are getting back in the game. Another catch? Ooh, close. Okay, now we need to respect uh, Nico. We can play this out. We can play this fight, but we need to play it from the back because we don't have flash. Yeah, I, we also missed Brown, so I don't think we. I, I think we had to wait for him to do something. Yeah, of course, of course. You don't want to like engage yourself. I think your positioning here is good. Oh uh, my God. <laughs> yeah, we could have like. Uh, you need to be more patient with your. What is it called? Your shots. Okay, that's that's not too bad, uh, considering that they are still giving you guys kills. We didn't take the Drake, but that's uh, uh, that's to be expected, considering the situation. Um, so we keep farming here. Even Kate, here, keep... I should have uh, frozen the lane, right? Mm, well, at this point, not, because laning phase is over already. Um, and you need to contest Herald, so you can't really froze, you know? Yeah. You can't really froze. Um But you could you could have like um No, no, it's good, it's good. Your re recall here is good. I was going to say you could have went for tower, but you can't. You need to contest the herald normally if they try to you know, try to do it. So what you do now? Take red. Cassadin is trolling a bit. <laughs> the insta ping. He was saying that uh, he was blaming me for choosing Jin with the Brom support. Well, well, he's choosing Cassadin into Nico. That's that is just as bad, you know. He's <laughs> um. Uh, but you see, like, the, the thing is, you're using, like, probably, like, 60% of your mental resources into flaming. So you're never really going to hyper-focus the same way you focus on that 12-0 game, right? Yeah. So you, you're going to achieve inconsistent 
results by doing this. Like you're gonna play good some games and you're gonna play really bad some games and autopilot it. And inconsistent results lead to inconsistent performance. So you never really wanna do that. You wanna play the same way every game, basically. You wanna always play just as good, you know? Um, so you never flame, basically, because you, if you're flaming, you're not focusing, basically. Yeah. And if I want to win, I fucking focus, like, as hard as I can. I don't really care about my teammates. Okay, this is good ult. I would go for Nico here on the left. I don't know if you've noticed the Nico there. Mm. So after you see Caitlyn is no longer available, I would instantaneously switch for... Um, to the left, do you see the Nico there? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not such a big deal. Nice, you got the kill there. We focus Nico. Nico, Nico. Okay, a thousand gold. Let's go. This is super good. You guys are coming back to the game. Really nice. And you get holy shit! You just came out of base, and look at your gold. <laughs> <laughs> that feels yeah, so good. Okay, nice. so you guys have the jungler here. No, you should have healed him. What? Wait, wait. What she died from a team mushroom. You oh, I didn't. I didn't pay attention. To... You should have healed him here, and then you guys secured the herald. Look, she she even pings it on the chat. <laughs> Okay, yeah, maybe you guys still take it. No, Cassidy fucked it up. Cassidy reset it. Yeah. He shouldn't never jump like that. If he jumps like that, it, it resets. Now you can't really do it. They're just gonna come. You need to back here. You need to back. Do they come in time? They blue trinket. Where is Hecarim? Okay, I guess they didn't want to contest. But that was uh, a bit risky there. Still good. You got the Herald and you got a ton of shutdown gold. So that's super good. Um, you're kind of like back in the game. You're even out farming the Caitlyn. Um, I'm not really used to like Jin itemization. He normally goes this, right? He doesn't go any other boots. He always goes this one, right? Well, I've seen most guys going that item, but like for me, it doesn't make sense sometimes. So I choose, choose mm -hmm. the armor ones or the magic resist ones. Okay, okay. So he doesn't really need the Berser Berserkers ones, right? Um, I don't know, like these ones, uh, they reduce the movement speed. Uh, slow? Slow, yeah. They reduce the slow, but sometimes the slow doesn't really affect me. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think this one, yeah. these ones are good. Okay, five seconds for your ultimate. You can set this up. Oh, they doesn't need just uh, buy engages, UW. Perfect. Ooh, we walked into the alt a little bit. We could have sidestepped a little bit there. Yeah. Okay, we have Herald, so we want to pop up the Herald mid now. Mm, we we should have kept pushing and popped the Herald mid th here. It's the perfect opportunity. Their whole wave clear, if you take a look at their team, the, their whole wave clear is dead. Caitlyn and, and, and Nico are the only ones that can wave clear. We should have pushed mid here. You should have like spamping the turret uh, a few seconds ago when you guys were mid. Let me let me rewind and I'll tell you. Here. So you win this, you spamping the turret, you spamping the, the turret and you spamping the herald. So they you know you communicate what, what is your intent and then you pop herald mid and you take one tower and you potentially crash it into the second. Because you have twenty seconds, twenty seconds for both the um, Caitlyn and uh, and Nico there. But what if like Heka engages on us because one of us was low? But uh, you got but Cassidy just kills him. Cassidy Cassidy just uh, Cassidy is full HP with blue. And they're never gonna engage on you. They're just gonna need to defend the Herald there. You you hundred percent here. You know, pu push the wave with Cassidy. You and Cassidy buy just stays closer, just in case. Um, and and you just get the free um, herald pop on the tower. But I think he could even maybe one shot me if he came from the bush. 
But I mean, you, you know where he is, right? Like it's not unknown. You know he's there. So you can just prepare. Like he's never gonna. Like he could he have. Was going for a, he was going for a, an engage. I think. Yeah, yeah. Like he could actually do it. Like it at any moment. Like look at him. He could at any moment start like going. You know. Like even here. Like even after you take this damage, look. So you take Nico all damage. He just ults you here. And one shots you, but he doesn't do it. Yeah. So like he could actually one shot you at any time, but he doesn't do it. So you know you might as well just push the wave and herald. Now that they don't have any wave clear. And I think like if you spamping the tower, your team will like understand what you mean. Like you spamping the tower and you spamping your herald. And they will be like, ah, okay, he wants to push. Yeah, yeah, we have Herald, we should push, you know? And they will all be on the same page then. Yeah. Uh, I think that was a good opportunity. But it's, it's okay, like, you will have another opportunity to Herald soon, probably, hopefully. I think I didn't have, or I didn't use. <laughs> oh, nice W, okay. This is Drake, potentially. Okay, we ooh, careful here. Okay. Neko could have been there though. I would have, uh, you know, thrown like a, like since yeah, we, was... since this fight happened bot and we don't have vision on top on the in this top side, um, Thresh gave vision of where all your team is, so the enemy team could just be prepping, you know, in this brush here. So I would have been a bit more careful entering this brush. I would have just like wait for my team to enter. I would I wouldn't like enter like this. I would just wait for my team to enter. Because if if Nico is here, she just one shots you. I and was thinking she might be there, but I was like, ah, fuck it, I will go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so well, look, this is another opportunity. Um, while your team, you know, before the the Drake happens, you can herald mid, and if you herald mid, it means you need to, uh, someone needs to defend mid the herald, and then you guys can Drake for free. I mean, it's it's still it's still free because it's a five v four, but you even make it more secure like that because someone needs to defend mid herald. Instead of like direct, instead of directly going for the Drake, you first herald and then you go for the Drake. I think you're waiting too much for the kill steal though. Nice. You know, we, we're kind of lucky, you know, that Cassidy is doing, w doing well now. But here, I would have, like, hit sooner. When was that? So here, look. You're, wait you're waiting, like, so much for your last shot. And then you, <laughs> and, and then you kill, uh, click, like, uh, Nico. But other than that, your position, position was good. Um, but look. Look what, what happened here. So, do you see this fight? This was like a minute or a fight or like 40 seconds fight. If you had Herald here, you Herald would have been taken all, like the first tower and then uh, popped on the second one. Yeah. So, it's important to notice these things. Or even here, you might just Herald and take the tower, you know, since four of them are dead. You know, you just stand in the tower, Herald, uh, and then the Herald tanks, and then you take it. Yeah. My mind was like, good only when we had a wave. But I think I never used it like that. To, to tank it, and I take it. But yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, it's just going to come with time. If you like focus on it like for some games, you're just going to start doing it more. So yeah, I would go... yeah. You know this game, I would actually go, I don't know if you end up going, but I would go, um, what is it called, um, Phantom Dancer. This is a perfect game for Phantom Dancer, because they have the Hecarim, which is going to try to one-shot you, and the Nico is going to go for you as well. So I think it's a perfect game for Phantom Dancer, this one. You don't really need the extra range from, like, uh, well, you already have it. Rapid fire cannon, so you don't really need like any other uh, zeal item. I'll just go phantom dancer, you know, with this with with this, uh, this zeal, because that that allows you to survive team fights. Okay, uh, okay, you need to you need to herald soon. 
and you see what happens because you didn't herald in the other two opportunities now you end up doing like a very bad herald because you herald here everyone knows where the herald is and your team is bot so they're just gonna clear it here and it's not even gonna pop on the tower if there's if they're not like garbage you know they're just gonna yeah they're just gonna clear it so you see the problem there we should have been like more uh what is it called yeah more aware of the herald there Holy, what the hell? Oh, this is you run to Riven here. You should have run to Riven. You see Riven on the right? Yeah. You should have just run to Riven. Well, she comes in anyways. Oh, you messed up a little bit here. Yeah, I would have just queued because he blind you. So you should just queue here. Q and heal and back off. Um, but in any case, like the mechanic thing here is okay. Like you make a mechanical mistake, but that doesn't matter. I think the, the thing I want you to take away from here is not that. I, I think you, the most important thing was the map awareness here. You see Riven on the right. She's coming for you. You see she's moving towards you. So you should run. You shouldn't run away from her. You should just run to your teammate. And I think if you did that, um, Timo wouldn't wouldn't even take the lantern there. Yeah. Because he would be too scared to go into a riven, and then use uh, you know free kill the thresh. And maybe that's Baron. I don't know. Jungler is doing golem, so maybe not. Um, but yeah, either way, that that's the important thing I want you to take away from there: some uh, minimap awareness during fights. Minimap awareness during fights or like, well, during skirmishes or ganks. I don't know how you want to call it. So if it's in your writing down, I will, it will send me after, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm writing everything down. But it, in, in any case, I'll, yeah, I'll send you as well the recording here of the game. Okay. Um, you just need to shoot me up your email on the, on the description. Uh, sorry on the on the discord and then i i will send you the recording as well yep so we go for baron it's really lucky you know that the casting is uh i mean i mean lucky i mean it's really good that the casting is you know getting back in the game this is really good we're scaling okay hickory engages you don't need to be that scared though he already used the engage you need to be more aggressive here But it's okay. It's okay. He dies. We could have healed the brown there. Ooh. What was that? I wanted to Oh, I see what happened. You used a click yeah. and and then you autoed the minion. Yeah, the auto went to the minion. Yeah. Unfortunately. But it, it was a good try though. It was a good try. Um, but the important thing there was I, I would have healed the Brom there to have him yeah. alive. Oh, it's true. We, we didn't swap our trinket. We should have gotten a red or blue trinket way sooner at level 9. Yeah, I usually go for the blue. <laughs> and the instant surrender. Okay, Cassidy, nice. So we have Nico down. Can't really do much here now. You just push this out and probably go bot. Oh no, Drake is up. Yeah, we need to go bot. But yeah. Okay, that's really nice. You have heal. He goes for Brom. Okay. Okay, this is good. Just watch out for the Nico. Need to wait for Nico to show up. I think it's good. Like your your passive passiveness here was good because you still didn't know where Nico was. And she could just be on any brush. Okay. 
Okay. So you're going for QSS here, I imagine, right? Yeah. But you don't really need it. I'm going to explain. So I see what you, because I see a pattern here. And I see like you buy Scimitar a lot on your RPG and you're buying it this game. So here you don't really need Scimitar or QSS like desperately. What you need here is GA and and as well you didn't buy, what is it called? A Phantom, Phantom Dancer. Dance. You need Phantom Dancer and GA this game. Because the problem is they're not going to try to hook you or, I mean, of course they're going to try, but you should not be in range for hook. The problem is that as soon as a team fight starts and your everyone engages, um, Nico is going to go on you and Hecarim is going to go on you. And QSS is not going to save you from them. You need GA and you need Phantom Dancer this game. Not, uh, not QSS though. Yeah, I get it. You really need yeah. that uh, servability in order, but because it allows you to do damage. If you don't have that servability, you just cannot even get close to team fights because you're too scared to, you know, walk up because they can just one shot you. So you really need that, uh, you know, that that GA and that uh, Phantom Dancer for the shield. So this fight break, this fight breaks a bot, super nice, and then. Someone needs to go mid, and the rest can just push bot. They're not gonna. They're not gonna baron without uh, the ADC. But yeah, someone could drop a ward, you know. Oh, okay. I guess Timo damage OP. <laughs> Never mind. I take back my words. Okay, so this is good. Since they take baron, you can just take this tower. I will just insta recall here though, because they have empowered recall. And if, you know, Hecarim just comes running at you, you're dead here. Well, that's what it Ooh. Is. Yeah. And I wouldn't even heal here. I would just accept my mistake, you know? You never kill him here. He's too tanky. So yeah, after tower, I would have just, you know, tower taking tower is fine. And then I would just insta, insta back and group with my team. But not, not just for not dying here, but I would group with my team because they're going to instantaneously push mid with Baron. And if the em if the enemy team has Baron, you never split. You, ne you never split because they're just going to take your base. Yeah. If they have Baron, you need to be able to respond uh, as soon as possible. Okay. This is good. Hecarim makes another mistake. Oh, Kassadin hesitated too much. Uh, that's fine. They were throwing a lot. I feel like in this ELO, it's more about which team throws the most. <laughs> yeah, that's... I mean, at the end, that's that's like in every ELO, man. Like, uh, oh, okay. but you really like you need to focus on on your own mistakes. Like uh, the ELOs are gonna change by themselves. You don't need to focus on the ELO or the teammates. Yeah. They're just gonna play either way. You know, doesn't matter if you f if you focus on them. They're just gonna do the same thing. Um, so yeah, we just want to stand together. They have Baron. Wait, they lost it, right? Who, who? All of them died, right? So they, most of them lost it. I don't know what I did here. Yeah, the, this was I think bad, because you see what's ha you need to look at the map before. You see, Riven is pushing bot, right? So what Riven, Riven is trying to do, she's trying to create a man advantage. She's trying to bring like one or two people bot to stop her, and then you guys can team fight like a four v three on mid lane. So so before before doing these alts, you need to look at the map and or or before engaging, you need to look at the map and see see what's the situation. Okay, team fight breaks out here. Is the, is a, is Drake up? No, Drake is not up. So yeah, doesn't team fight this team fight doesn't make sense, but yeah, let's see what what we can do. So I thought it's doomed, so it's trying to get back. Mm. I mean, I can understand your position here. Like, you don't want to take this fight. Yeah. I would just go top here, you know. The only uh, thing... 
the only thing that, that that you could have done here is before this team fight happened. You know, like you already know that you don't want a team fight, right? Yeah. So don't even get into position to team fight, because if you get into position to team fight yourself, you're putting uh, yourself in danger of like getting hooked or anything. But also you're giving you know like in the real world that you have body language on the game as well. If you position for team fight. Your teammates are gonna think, okay, okay, we can go in, you know, because Jin is here. Yeah. But if you, if before this team fight you instantaneously go mid or go top and you ping back, the chances that your team engages are lower. Of course, if they're bad, they're gonna engage anyways. But you, you want to reduce the chances that they do it. So you, before this team fight even begins, you, you just use body language to make to let your team know that you don't want to do this, you know, that this is bad, because you don't want a team fight over no objective. There's no objective on the map. So, and like, like if they there was a Drake, if the, uh, if there was a Drake and you guys were good positioned, then you can contest it because you're back in the game. You're 40, 40 kills. You're back in the game. Um. So yeah, you can contest it. But here we're kind of like out of position. The 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 Brom instead of peeling for you, he like uh, abandons you or something, or I don't know. Like this is good here, but then yeah, he keeps going in. But yeah, this is all bad from 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 standing here. It's all bad because you you keep giving your team um, body language that you want to fight. So what what I would have done here is instead of being grouped here, instead of being here, because you you see what this is happening. Like by standing in the jungle here, you're letting your team know that you want to skirmish. So what I would do is I would just go push mid or push top, and it completely ignore this. Completely ignore it because you're not gonna be part of this team fight, so you might as well just be in a, on a lane pushing. And completely, completely ignore this fight because your team is gonna die anyways. And now they should take in hip. We give them, of course. Wait, what's happening? Mm. This is kind of risky though. I don't know if you guys come ahead here, but uh, you could have, you know, by doing this, you could have actually lost the game here. They could have ended here. If 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 you die here, like you never you never contest the inhib. Like you guys are two versus five, and they have engage. Um, so you never contest this inhib. You give them, you give them the inhib, in in all situations here. Because if they kill you here, they end the game directly. You know? Yeah. Um, luckily, they mess up. Like, they, you dodge the E and stuff like that. But you still, you know, killing Hecarim here doesn't do anything. And you could have lost the game here. If you both died, like Kasa and you die, they lose the game. They end the game directly. So, you need to be aware of this. This is a basic leak. Like, you, you need to give up in hips sometimes. You just need to like taking, like letting them taking in hip is not so it's not so bad, you know. You're still in the game, but if you try to defend it, being two v five and they engage on you and they kill you, they end di the game directly. So you might as well just you know be still in the game, but uh, with one in hip down. Again, an in hip down. We just want to be in mid, pushing mid. Team engages. You need you need to use more your pings by the way uh, by the way like the back ping the ret retreat ping the yellow one you you, yeah. you you need to use it more when you think like a team fight is not good you just spam ping it you see that storm razor slow that's really good for setting up kills and stuff that's why I like it a lot like if if Caitlyn just out of nowhere appears in a lane and just storm razors you. You just, uh, you know, Hecarim just uh, runs you down. Yeah. I don't know what happens now. Another fight breaks out here. Kassan is going all Rambo. You're, you're kind of wasting some time here, though. Standing in the mid lane. You could be farming jungle, farming bot. You know? Like, you're not going to contest Baron either way. Like your, you know, your jungler is like doing doing uh, chickens. 
So you, you might as well just be, you know, at least farming top, I think. You know, putting like a blue trinket here and farming top safely while everything is happening. But you don't want to stand in steel, you know. I understand you're like tilted from this game, but you want to be doing something always. Like I was expecting my teammates to go in and fight. I was just waiting for it to happen. Nah, like you see, you see the like this Vi indicates to me that she doesn't want to contest the the Baron because she's doing chickens, and I think it's fine. Like I, I honestly, without Cassidin, I wouldn't even contest this. Cassidin is really strong on team fights, and without him. I wouldn't even try to contest the Baron, I would just give them. Yeah. If they're not doing this fight. But for some reason, uh yeah, the Brom decided to go in. You actually, you know, kinda like baited with the body language as well, so you don't want to do that. So yeah, I'm I'm imagining they're backed off here. Now, next item, you can try to go for GA. Really, really, GA is really important in this team, against this team. Or yeah, even even stopwatch, you know, like first getting selling Doran's blade for stopwatch is good. So you can like negate, you know, like a Hecarim alt. At least, or a Hecarim E engage. That's as well I, really useful. I used to go. Uh... Like you said, I used to go Phantom Dancer and GA for for assassins, but like for some reason I didn't consider Hack an assassin, even though he one shots me. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of broken though. Like tanky junglers one shot ADCs. I really hate that meta. Yeah, <laughs> so boring. Or or even if he goes full tank, he will still win the one v one. That's so annoying. Yeah, true. But yeah, that's the a a meta right now. Um, so yeah, again, we're doing the same. This like jiggling here in the jungle, this is all bad. You should not be playing games with the enemy team like now. You should just yeah. be safe because you're giving you're giving the enemy an opportunity to engage on you. I felt it's really bad. What should have I done in this situation? Ping back. Like ping back and go top or go mid, you know, or in farm lanes. Like if I go mid or top, they will engage on me there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this situation, they are engaging. Of course, you need to wait first. So the the, the 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 flow of things are like this. You first need the minion wave to move. Then you get vision around. And then the next minion waves, you farm them here. But you need the vision. But in order to get vision, you first need to push the wave. So the minions give vision first. But, yeah, in, but in, the, in, the, in this game, we never do that. We never like go to a lane. Like, for some reason, like, after 30 minutes, you just stopped farming. Uh, you, you mean you should stop farming? No, no, no. Like, you shouldn't. Like, for some reason, you, you stopped farming this game after 30 right. minutes. I don't know why. Like, I feel like I can't go anywhere because if I go on any lane, they will engage on me. It's way too pushed to them. So, you first, you, you first need vision. So... Let's rewind. Let's rewind. I got the idea, but how can I get the vision on the by pushing by, by pushing the first like the lane first? So first, it comes with the with the not engaging. So first, like pinging back your team right now. Like you see what your team is doing here. You yeah. I insta ping back. You insta ping back, and you tell Cassidy go top. Um, where is the other Riven? Go bot. They will push the wave. Because, you know, Cassidy can, and Riven can be on a side lane because they're side lane champions like we talked about in the loading screen. They push the wave. The wave gives them vision, like the minions give vision. And while the enemy team is defending the wave, you, your support and jungle can move into the jungle here and put vision. But if, if you never push the wave, you can never go into the jungle because the enemy is not going to respond to any wave and they're always going to be waiting in the jungle. So, so the flow of things is like this. You first need to send someone to push top and bot, and then they get they get vision into the side lanes, like the side like the this this parts, and then you can just uh, start farming. Yep. But you but you never want to be like standing like still here because this indicates that you want to fight, and you don't want to indicate that because you don't want to fight right now. So yeah. This is kind of a bad fight to take, I would say. I wouldn't even... Like, I understand they want to contest the Drake, but this is a bad fight. 
they have better team fight. Like we need side lanes, basically. We need Cassidy to push a side lane and we need Irvine to push a side lane. We never want to like straight 5v5 because they have better team fight. Yeah, usually. And they end here. When it's doomed, but I didn't know what to do. Just just ping. Use your pings. That's the best thing you can do. Yeah. I would use my pings more here because you, you might think it doesn't do anything, but it actually does. And even if it doesn't work on every game, in the games that it does, it will start building up a habit on you and you will start, start like, you know, stop following bad engages and uh, your team will most likely listen like 50 or 60% of the time. They will not go in. Kassadin would be in a side lane, which he should be, you know, because it's Kassadin driven as well. And that will allow you to like do the one three one that we talked about before. Yeah. Which is what your team can do in this game. It's the only thing that they can do. <laughs> Report Jin. <laughs> 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 Holy shit. That's so funny, man. But yeah, I'm going to give you now the things that I wrote. And as well the Well, if you if you if you want to ask me something before we close out, you can also ask me now if you want. Well, uh, like will you give me a, uh the things I should like the homework? <laughs> yeah, 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 let me just copy paste you here. Um well, ignore the first line. I don't know why I wrote that, but yeah. This is the things I wanted to focus on. And um, like we talked about some, uh, the itemization thing, then the things you want to focus during game. But uh, go one by one. Don't try to do practice everything at once. Just go like keeping track of abilities for 10 games, then wave management for 10 games, minimap awareness for 10 games, you know, like one habit at a time. Yeah. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Massive thanks to this month's Patreons for their support. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.